To enact, to represent on or as on the stage, to act the part of. At Edge TV we have the saying to believe in Christ and live the life and that's what we're talking about probably in one of the most practical ways we can come up with today. I'm Nathan Brown and it's great to have you with us. We're talking about social justice and the responsibility or otherwise on Christians to change the world. Something that I think is an important thing to be talking about. So let's talk about it. If there was one thing you could change in the world, you could, one of the issues in the world that you could do something about, what would it be? I'd go for human trafficking and child slavery, but don't get me started on that just yet. Okay. <laughs> um, the exploitation of poor people and people around the world that are in third world countries and stuff, we get so much stuff for a pittance of what they you know, make in a day, they make nothing and yet we take advantage of that. Um, mm -hmm. So economic exploitation and inequity. That's correct. There's lots of E words in there. <laughs> Um, I'm particularly worried by things like detention laws and that sort of thing where you know people can be detained without charge and regardless of where they are in the world I think that's a really really big issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a thing for like um, shopping not that I like to shop but in the sense that for fair trade as well as sweatshop labourers mm -hmm. that I guess. Okay, it's almost connected with what Jared was saying so you're just copying. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, there are so many issues in the world, and you talk about you know, the basic issue of even just poverty, you know, which in a way leads to some of these other things and um, diseases in the world that simply we have the ways to cure them, but it just comes down to rearranging money. Mm. Um, yeah, and priorities. <laughs> yeah, and you look at the world and go, well, we spend so much money in this area why don't we actually do something about making people's lives better? Mm -hmm. um, it's a serious kind of issue. Yeah. Uh, we asked a bunch of young people what they thought about some of these issues and this were their, some of their responses for Edge TV. Yeah, I definitely feel helpless. I feel like I can't do anything about it. Just a lot of helplessness and knowing that you're like one person out of like so many that wants to make a difference but you can't because you're on your own. If you really wanted to overcome it completely, I guess you'd have to make that your passion in life. Pray about it and we, we can't really do, do anything about it, but we just need to trust that God will. I pray about it and that's probably the thing that gets me through, like just trusting in God and hoping that he'll be able to do something about it even if I can't. Um, sometimes it'll feel really hard that y you are just one person, but if you make it like a small donation to some funds and stuff or go on mission trips or something like that, I feel as though you could really make a difference and help. Uh, helping kids in other countries who um, don't have as much as we have, probably all the poverty in countries like Africa and stuff. I'd really like to change animal cruelty around the world, especially with the whale killings and stuff over in Japan and all that. I've heard it said before that you must change yourself to change the world and I think that's a huge step. I think starting to change yourself and then you can make an impact on other people so that they can change as well and then slowly it'll grow and then hopefully we can change the world. Thanks for those comments for Edge TV and the Enact episode. Adele, you've been thinking about some of these ideas. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. I was thinking social justice isn't something we have to worry about, you know, just for people who live in countries that are run by dictators. You know, like there are more slaves in the world than ever before at the moment. And they're not just in sweatshops in some foreign country, but they can often actually be within our own country and being exploited right here, right now. And I think there's also many social justice in, uh, issues in first world countries, if you can call them that, you know, like laws are made that discriminate against different people. Um, the treatment of the mentally ill is still a massive problem. Um, Indigenous people often 
often have quite a few problems with you know, law and that kind of thing. And there's just so many other problems that you know, we can't really say that we've got it right or have it better than many other countries. Um, you know, particularly when discrimination is really still as alive and well as it has been as it, at, you know, in any time in the past, even though we like to think we're living in a more enlightened society now. Mm. And I think as Christians, we should be striving to make the world a better place. And you know, engaging in social justice should be one of the ways in which we do this. Uh-huh. Okay. Mm. When you do get a list of all these kind of issues and you just look at all the problems in the world, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. Mm. Yeah. Oh yes. How do we overcome, you know, what do we do with that feeling of over- overwhelmness? Um, do we just surrender to it and say, well, we can't do anything, let's give up now? What do we do? I think that's actually the initial reaction that all of us would have. <laughs> like just as an example, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the issue that's gotten me going and really passionate about is that of human trafficking. So much so that I've been doing quite a lot of research on it and then I'm like bombarded by all this information and I don't know where to kind of start. And so I think instead of just getting overwhelmed and go, I don't know where to start, which I did initially, mm. you just have to continue, like you've got to pursue it like even more you've got to ask the questions Mm. um you know someone will know someone that can actually help you know where to start Mm. if anything i guess working with youth i'd love to have our young people be more aware of these issues so that they too can have some kind of a connection rather than just go oh it exists but i don't know what to do about it and they just go about their own lives did not worry so yeah. you know yeah. yeah I think one way to deal with it is you know sort of maybe if you try to be specific about an issue yeah. mm-hmm. choose one thing find a group that deals with it you know start giving your support to that particular group and you know engage that way and I mean there are so many issues that it can be overwhelming but I'm, I think there are other people who will deal with other issues as well yes. and if we put our passion and our efforts into making one thing better then we can you know try further things yeah, down the track mm, yeah yep. I think the most important thing as well as not to not to think that you have to take on the entire world and change it tomorrow. Why not? Because <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Change the world. No. Just yeah. like just as I mentioned, my passion has been for with fair trade and sweatshop labors and things like that. It's just one thing at a time, making sure that when I'm at a supermarket to buy the fair trade chocolate, um, when I'm shopping for clothes to make sure mm-hmm. that I know that its origins and where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Just so little things. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Fair enough. I almost cringe to ask Scott for a silly answer on a serious topic like this, but we'll give it a shot anyway. Why are there silent letters? The inventor of silent letters was H.B. Pencil. After creating the first commercial lead writing implement, he nearly went broke while waiting for customers to return and purchase a replacement. After a brainstorming session with his then associate, H.I. Leiter, who went on to be a brilliant success, several ways were drawn up to increase the frequency of a customer needing to repurchase a pencil. One method used was the intentional creation of random cracks in the leads so that they would need to be sharpened regularly because they would keep breaking. Another method used for a short while was the hiring of bandits to storm into buildings demanding their pencil cases be filled with writing implements. Probably the sneakiest method ever used and undetected for years was the subtle invention and gradual introduction of silent letters. By introducing silent letters into the English spelling, and this is the point, pencil usage went up 7.623% per paragraph, which in turn increased the return rate of customers the same percentage due to their higher use of lead in their pencil. HB Pencil later did go broke after overspending in the development of left-handed pencils. It never drew many sales, probably because of the lack of left-handed erasers. One wonders if we will have silent letters in heaven. What about pencils also? Are they required? One thing's for sure, there will be no left-handed people in heaven. I mean, no one will be left-handed in heaven. I mean, because, you know, everyone will be right and perfect. Uh, Forget I said that, lefties. Thanks, Scott, for another silly answer for EDGE TV. We'll be back with more exploring the topic of ENACT on EDGE TV.
On Edge TV, I'm surrounded by angry young people that want to change the world. Right now, we're talking about Enact, talking about social justice issues, changing the world and making the world a better place. I think part of making the world a better place will be stopping and listening to what Dave has to say on The Edge. Hi, this is Dave on The Edge. What do you dream about? I had a dream one night about myself and one of the youth in my church where I was pastoring and we were running, we were racing and we were racing as fast as we could and I don't know why, but in the dream it made sense. And as we were running and running as fast as we could, Angelina Jolie, Tomb Raider, went shooting past us and she was way ahead. And so we were chasing her and she went around a corner around the last bend and I knew of a shortcut. So I took the shortcut and cut through and there was Angelina Jolie digging the hole that we had to build. I had to dig so that we could get on the spaceship to launch. And it makes perfect sense in the dream. And so she's digging and and my friend Jared, he's digging, and then I start digging, and we're all digging, and then Angeline DiGioli runs off, and she climbs up the ladder into the spaceship, and Jared keeps digging, and then he realizes he's gone far enough, and I stop, and I said, Jared, you have to go. And he says, what? I said, you have to go. And he said, what do you mean? Why, why aren't you going to race me anymore? And I said, because I just realized the whole world's going to blow up. And yes, we do have to have a man and woman to repopulate the earth. I'm sorry, that's what was in the dream. And so you have to go with Angelina Jolie, and that's gonna be your task later, but there's so many people here who do not know, and I have to tell them. That's my job, to tell them that the earth is coming to an end. And I woke up, and I was sweating, and I thought to myself, even in my dreams, this vision comes to me, this vision that I need to tell people, I need to tell the world that the world is dying around them. And I have a vision for a dying world, a vision to tell them what God has put on my heart, that the world is coming to an end. And there is only one way out, and it's not a spaceship going to the stars. It's Jesus coming from the stars to us. What is the vision that God's put on your heart? What is the dream that you're giving to a dying world? This has been Dave on the Edge. Where do you stand? Thanks, Dave, for sharing with us at Edge TV. We've talked about some of the issues that have caught our attention in the world and things that we think we should be a part of. How do we decide what issues to be concerned about. You know, we said there's so many things in the world we could spend our time and attention on. Mm -hmm. how, personally, how do you pick an issue that you want to jump into? I think if it's a personal passion of yours and you're interested in that, you'd want to um, help. Also, proximity, mm -hmm. I think, is important. If you see something that's nearby and easy to fix, mm. you should be fixing it. You, yeah. you can get into that. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I think there's just going to be things that you'll be naturally more drawn to doing than yeah. to others. And, you know, if that's where, you know, you feel led to do something, well, why not? Mm. 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 And I think it depends on, on what confronts you at a, you know, at a certain time mm. in your life. Mm. Like, I would never have thought human trafficking or child slavery um, five years ago if it hadn't confronted me now with some of the media attention and you know the write-ups that I've read and mm. it it depends on where I guess part of your journey and what confronts you mm. and yeah whether you choose to do something about it or not. How do you choose an issue Melody? I guess it's just something that I can relate to um, something that I feel like I can do something about mm. um, yeah, because otherwise if it's just like like you guys were saying about ge geography geography and stuff, like if it's too far away, what can I do? Just write letters? Mm. That's something I could do, but it's, it's not something as close to home as I could po mm -hmm. probably get. Mm -hmm. Is there a risk that, and it's certainly something that I see around in some Christian circles, that social justice becomes trendy and we all want to be a part of this thing? Is that a risk that we just get involved in an issue because it's the cool thing to do? Or is that a good thing? Initially it could be. Mm. I, I've known of people who, you know, it's the cool thing to do. But then when you get into it, it's not just being in it. You, you end up learning about it. You end up researching it. And I think it will touch you and change you in some way. Mm. Mm. You can't help but it be impacted once you actually make a choice to make a difference in someone's life. Mm -hmm. And it, whether the motivation to start with is because oh, everyone else is getting on this bandwagon. You can't, I mean, I cannot think of anyone that would not be impacted by that. Mm. How can you not? So, yeah. yeah. And hopefully that would lead to, you know, further involvement with, you know, social justice issues further down the track. Yeah. You know, you sort of think, well, if we've done this one thing, well, why can't we do something else? And mm. then maybe something else after that. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I certainly think the cool of mm. doing something in some of these ways is a good first step. From, from my perspective, I think that taking it a step further is that it's 
good to be interested in topics that aren't cool at the moment. Mm. Um, yeah, one of the things that we as a church has often been involved with is um, religious liberty. Mm. Now that's something that doesn't get a lot of attention, but it's something that's important to us for various reasons. And so that's something that we continue to work with, yeah. even though it might not be getting all the headlines this week. No. Um, and that's kind of cool. And one of the things that I am involved with, you disparage letter writing, is writing letters. <laughs> and, you know, it doesn't make any difference to, I mean, nobody sees me do it. Um, it's not something that you go and have fun with or whatever. It's just something that I regularly do um, to protest something that I think is wrong in the world in different ways. Mm. Um, I think the other thing that we need to look at when we're talking about these kind of issues is what the Bible has to say, mm, um, God's perspective on this. And you know, on one count, there are more than 2,103 verses in the Bible that talk about God's concern for poverty, mm. Mm. You know, about how God cares about the poor. And it says it so many times throughout the Bible, you sort of wonder how we miss, kind of miss it so often. Um, that's obviously a big, important issue to God. Yeah. And so that should be an important issue to us. It's actually funny that you say that because it's, it's emphasised, it's repeatedly, mm. um, you know, said in the Bible, but yet I think as a church, and can I say that sometimes our focus is not that relevant when it comes to these issues. We focus so much more on theological issues, which are important, but how you apply that in reality mm is so much different like if people will not have us be relevant in the way that we bring these issues out how are they going to listen to some of the mm. theology if you like yeah well we <sighs> to explore this a little bit further we asked clancy to tell us what the bible has to say on this topic sometimes i must confess that i wish following jesus was easier it's not that the gospel is complicated or that forgiveness is hard to earn but following Jesus means following a challenging example. The Jesus that we meet in the Bible provides us with the security of God's love and then asks us to step out of our comfort zone for the sake of those around us. His command to love our neighbours and even our enemies strongly contradicts with our natural human attitude of me first. Jesus certainly practised what he taught. All through the Gospels, we find him talking with the oppressed, healing the sick and finding the lost. He touched the untouchable and loved the unlovable, always putting others before his own safety and reputation. The challenge to live according to his example is serious. In Matthew 25, 31 to 46, Jesus describes two kinds of people. Both groups acknowledge him as Lord, but only one group is invited to enter eternity with him. In the parable, the group invited into eternal joy had fed the hungry, clothed the naked, given drink to the thirsty, included the stranger, cared for the sick and visited the imprisoned. The other group had not. This story can be pretty scary because the life that it calls us to live is so demanding. But God never tries to keep us out of eternal life. In fact, he offers to help us in our goal to live as Christians. God with our permission, works on us from the inside outwards to reform us into the image of himself, the image that we were created to be. By entering into the Christian life, we choose to begin this lifelong process. Jesus told us that it is better to live out our belief in him than to simply say that we love and know him. We are called to say it often without using words, to both believe in Christ and live the life. I'm Clancy Rogers for EDGE TV. On Edge TV, we're talking about enacting our Christian faith in practical ways, addressing some of the big issues in the world. I came across a quote recently from a book called Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing, talking about the golden rule, uh, which of course is do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and some of these kind of things. It says this, Search heaven and earth, and there is no truth revealed more powerful than that which is made manifest in works of mercy to those who need our sympathy and aid. Mm. This is the truth as it is in Jesus. Pretty powerful yeah. statement about doing this kind of thing, being concerned about these issues, are core mm. to what it means to be a Christian. Definitely. Um, but one of the things I've come across recently has been the suggestion, and I've read a number of articles on it, that... In the past and in various stages and places of church history, Christians have wrestled with the idea of legalism. Mm. 
you know, that we've got to do stuff to be a proper Christian. And that among some people, so the suggestion goes that, you know, social justice is the new legalism. This is how you prove you're a Christian, by being concerned about these things. What do you think of that idea? That's a very interesting thought. I can never, I don't think I could ever see social justice as ever becoming a legalistic act. If anything, we are doing very little of it. So there's uh, no risk of us getting carried away. I, don't, away in I, think, I think we've got room to actually <laughs> move towards that. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, it depends on the individual, but I think as a whole, Mm -hmm. I, that's kind of hard to yeah, believe. Yeah, I could see it sort of maybe being on an individual level where people are going, oh, well, if I do this, then this will be, you know, so much more of a Christian thing, whatever. But I don't think the church as a whole is anything like that. And perhaps that's maybe been because there's always been that thing of, you know, the church and state of being separate entities and people sort of shied away from, you know, getting more involved with the political side of things just in case it's a bit too much of bringing them together. Yeah. Mm. And that's kind of a cheap shot. People will say when... If someone starts talking about poverty, they'll say, oh, that's a political mm. issue, we can't talk about it. Well, mm. God said an awful lot about it in the Bible. Mm. Um, and it's not really about politics, it's about what it means to be human and what it means to be Christian. Mm. Well, I mean, it's just the whole thing about, when we talk about all these social justice issues, it's about people suffering. And the whole thing about being Christian is to love God and to mm. love your neighbours. Mm. Mm -hmm. If you don't love your neighbour, I mean, if you love your neighbours, you're not going to want them to suffer. Mm. No. Yeah. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> but it also comes out as far as our experience with God, the way that we treat, the way that we respond to the issues that we are facing right now is uh, it comes out of our experience with God and the way that God mm. moves us, I mm. personally believe, and I think someone might share that, I hope. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it's with your priorities, as in if you, you know, it's the same thing with the legalism thing. If you're doing... It's the reason you're doing it's it. If you're doing yep. social mm -hmm. justice because you think it'll get you into heaven, mm -hmm. it, yeah. it's not going to work that way. No. But if you're doing it because you've got a close relationship with God and that's what you feel um, passionate about or something, that's a very different thing. So you should be doing it not because, you know, you feel like you should. Point mm -hmm. scoring or something. Yeah. Yeah. But because it's, not, it's something yeah. that you feel, you know, is needs to be changed and you want to love those mm -hmm. people you have that love for the neighbors that it's a response to what god has done for yes, us definitely yeah. and when we recognize the grace and love that god shows to us we say well we become agents of that same grace oh, and love sure. in the world around us and this is a practical way to do it mm. a serious kind of thing um, so how you know if we have the chance to talk to a group of christians and say how would you say this is something that you need to be concerned about and important? You know, it's an important part of life. How would you explain that? I think with the responsibility that we've taken us on as Christians or followers of Jesus, and that is the Great Commission goes so much more than just um, telling off the the beautiful stories of Jesus mm -hmm. it is you know if they say that action speaks louder than words then I think that is the actual truth of the matter mm -hmm. that as the world sees the way that we reflect Jesus mm -hmm. and the way that we respond to some of these major issues or even little issues I think that will actually say to the world hey mm -hmm. they are people that is walking the talk and that's putting their words mm -hmm. into action rather than just that was that quote Preaching that I just mm. yes. read. The most powerful way to tell people about the yeah. gospel is to do it. Yeah, mm. and it's mm. not to earn points for heaven, mm. but it's a response, yep. really. Yeah, so. That's cool. That's Jared? Oh, I was just thinking as well as the fact that, you know, if someone is suffering and in pain and, and under abuse, they're not going to want to hear about the fact that Jesus forgave their sins. No. Mm. 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 It doesn't even make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Jared, you've been checking out this issue as far as it is reflected in Edge magazine. Yes, we are concerned with social justice at Edge. So on www.edgeonweb.org, if you go there, you can find all the archives of the magazine. And in issue 12, we look at breaking the boundaries and Gary Christian and Rachel Gray examine this new breed of Christian who get their hands dirty, get in and help people. Also, um, issue 38 looks at an article called Pastor and Poverty. It's been put together by ADRA or it's one of the ADRA issues of EDGE. So all of the ADRA issues of EDGE have social welfare justice sort of things in them. So check ADRA. those out. ADRA being the Adventist Development, Adventist Development Relief, Relief Agency, Agency who are developing... a bit of time 
doing partnership on a couple of magazines. That's there. correct. That's so, cool. um, and issue 49 is practical Christianity, looking again at getting into things and actually loving our neighbours in a practical way. Hmm. Awesome. A serious kind of thing. So, can we change the world? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's unanimous. We'll just take a vote <laughs> and it'll change. change the world. I think we <laughs> should change the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I guess one of the things to remember is that it begins where we are mm. and what we have the opportunity to influence. Um, you now, it's not just something that happens on the other side of the world and that's another way that we feel powerless when faced with this kind of thing. Um, yeah, look around us, look around in our communities and see where the injustice and the hurting and all those things are and say, what can we do? What can we do as a group of people who believe? Mm. It's a very practical part of believing in Christ and living the life. This is Edge TV.